sometimes you might need to print out a course and if you've created a slide where the interaction is is created with states when you print it out to Word, you don't see each of those states printed. You only see slides and you see the items on slide layers printed. So this is a way to change an interaction that's built with states and revert it to having it with layers. So here's an interaction I have and there's various buttons here and as you click the buttons, the main text box has different states occurring. The trigger makes a trigger on here changes the state, a trigger on here changes the state, and so on. So let me show you how you change this to be layers instead. So you can see here's my text box, and I've got five different layers, or five different states assigned to that text box. I'm going to add five different layers then, one for each of those states. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there's a couple of things you might think of. One thing I can do is go to Edit States, click this text box, copy it, and just put it on my layer. doesn't work that way. It doesn't come out the way you hope it does. So let's go back to my base layer. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to copy that text box and put it on every layer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first layer and my text box here and what I'm going to do is change the initial state of that text box to whatever whatever corresponding state I want it to be. So this one is water and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel my layers as I go and this will become apparent why I'm doing this in a little bit. So here's my second layer and I want it to now be cost. I'm going to relabel this to cost and again, if I was doing this from the beginning and um, knew that I wanted this course is needs to be printed out, I would probably design it from the beginning with layers. But this has come up afterwards and I need to make sure that I can print it out seamlessly without me having to do screenshots of every element of the interaction. On my fourth layer, we'll go down to the fourth state, which is audit. I'm going to relabel it audit my fifth layer I need to change this text box so we're just gonna see it right from the beginning as looking like measure and I'm gonna change this to measure. Next thing I'm gonna do is go back to my base layer and you can see that the triggers I've created it are, is every time they click a button the main text box state changes. I want to change this now so that when they click a button it jumps to a layer. So the way to do this quickly is I click on the button I double click on the trigger and I just change the action show layer now you can see why I labeled them uh, this is the water button I want to jump to the water layer when they click the button I do the same with the energy one show layer energy when they click the button cost one show oh, show the layer cost when we get there audit show the layer audit when they click the audit button and again a double double click on the trigger lets me open it to edit it show layer measure when they click the measure button so that's it let's take a look and see how this works so here it looks fine looks the same as before and now when I click each of the buttons you can see the layers are coming through but there's a problem that the main text box we're seeing from the start and it's always showing in the background so how do we hide that there's a couple of different ways one of them you might think is to go to the layer change properties and hide items on the base layer what that is going to do unfortunately is hide all of these items on the base layer so if I show you what that looks like here's the water button I click it it's now hiding everything on the base layer. My buttons are all, all gone. I can't click them anymore. And I don't want to copy those buttons onto every single layer. So that's not our answer. Let's get rid of that. So how can you do this? Another way, there's two ways that you can do this. And I'll show you this way that adjusts things on the timeline and hides items. So we're going to open up the wire, water layer. We're going to go to timeline and typically you'll see it look like this. So it shows you the items on your layer and it shows you items on the base layer. You can use this little arrow here to open up that base layer, see all of the items that are on it, and hide 
or show different items. That's what this little icon here is. So I'm going to hide the text box on the base layer. I'm going to go to the cost layer and do the same thing. And I'm just going to keep turning off the this button that says show this text box. So now when we take a look at the slide and do a preview, you'll see that that text box is now being hidden each time I click on a layer. Now there's a different way to do this too. So I'm going to turn that back on on each of those layers. Oops, I'm showing them all. Let's go back. Oops, let's go to the third one, turn it back on, back on, back on. So one other way you can do this instead of fussing with your timelines like that is you can go to your base layer. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this start. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down to the beginning just so I can kind of see it right above my base layer. And then that way I can think in my mind I'm moving up through these layers as I'm clicking through the interaction. That's the reason I ordered them in this direction. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take that text box and copy it and delete it from the first base layer and put it on this start layer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger that as soon as the person comes to this slide, I want them to show that start layer. So when the timeline starts, show layer start. The same principle as what we just saw is going to happen now in this method. So instead of hiding an object on each layer, I can do it this way too. So seamlessly the person is taken to the start layer and then as they click the buttons they see all the other layers. Now again, why would I ever want to do this? I would probably create it this manner to start with if I knew it was a course I want to print out. If it's a course I want to print out and I find out afterwards, this sometimes might be an easier method to get it published. So let me show you what it looks like when it's published. So we click Publish, Word. We want to see our layers, so every layer we've created in this course will now display. I don't have any slide notes, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to leave my screen shot size right now at medium. So we'll publish that out. And now that's complete, we'll view the document. So here's my document. So now I've got to scroll down until I get to those slides, or that slide. It's a little farther here. It was actually 1.8. So here's where it prints out. So now I get a blank slide because that's really the way it looks to begin with. I can get rid of that one. And I'm just going to do a little edit and hit the enter button down here. Yeah, there we go. So here's our start layer. Here's our water layer. Here's our cost layer, energy audit and measure. So now each of the layers are printing out and I'm not missing any states that I might have created within my course. So it's just something to consider and again this is a design thing you might need to do when you might need to print out a course by hard copy. If you don't have to print it out by hard copy then either method is a great way to design an interaction. I hope that helps you.